if for instance you wish to value you, you wish to acquire a company if you want to come and buy rcm online college from me and the other shareholders there is no way you'll be able to buy this college or this institution in a, a blind manner you need to do the profits from the college on a yearly basis which will be able to convert to cash flows after you convert them to cash flows what do you do you'll be able to discount them so in short what i'm saying ladies and gentlemen for you to be able to value a targeted company one of the methods we shall be using is what we call discounted cash flow method discounted cash flow method now listen and listen to me very well when it comes to discounting of cash flows i'm so sure some of us from what i saw the students who did their financial management long long time ago the students who did their financial management long long time ago they must have forgotten the formula of discounting or can we make an assumption that all of us are very good in terms of discounting cash flows is that an assumption you would want us to make ladies and gentlemen that all of us are excellent no 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 we must have forgotten discounting and it is my honor to introduce you again to what we call discounting so i'll take 30 minutes of your time to teach you discounting and these discounting techniques i would want us to write them at the back of our books or at the middle i don't know i prefer back of our books back of our books so discounting discounting so we're writing there discounting of cash flows discounting of cash flows discounting of cash flows discounting of cash flows so to discount a cash flow ladies and gentlemen if for example today you go to a supermarket not supermarket really but just a normal shop like where they are selling some clothes and then they tell you that this particular shirt is going for 2000 bob and if you are not comfortable with that price of 2000 bob of course you would want to squeeze some bargain you would want to bargain a little bit so you'll ask for a discount so a discount value is a reduced value is a reduced value so ladies and gentlemen if for example somebody was to promise you like a million shillings payable to you in 3 years time trust you me a million shilling in 3 years time will is not equivalent to a million shilling today a million shilling today will be able has got a higher value has got a higher value because ladies and gentlemen listen i remember during those hey days in the mid 80s i would see my mom going to the market with only one shilling kingotore one like this one shilling like this going to a market and she would go there with a big big basket she would come back home with that basket full of great things from that one shilling she would still get what year back home with some change look at that shilling in 1985 and the same shilling today today even a kid who is three year old a three year old today try giving them one shilling i'm so sure that kid will throw that one shilling back to you knowing for sure that the one shilling is valueless is valueless so what are we talking about ladies and gentlemen here what you're saying here is that there is what we call time value of money time value of money that as we walk into the future we expect money to lose value and because we expect this money to lose value in the future then you would need a lot of money in the future for you to be able to buy what you would have bought for very little cash today so when you talk of discounting a discounted cash flow basically ladies and gentlemen is a present value so you're saying there that eh, to discount cash flows to discount cash flows to discount uh, cash flows uh, means uh, means ascertaining means ascertaining means ascertaining their present values means ascertaining 
their present values. Means ascertaining their present values. Present value is also known as the today's value. The today's value. The today's value. Ascertaining their present who? Their present values. Today's value. It will be worthwhile for us to note that eh, there are uh, two types of cash flows. Uh, tell us eh, that eh, there are uh, two types of cash flows. There are uh, two. There are uh, two types of cash flows. There are two types of cash flows. Namely, we have the irregular cash flows. We have the irregular cash flows. And then number two, we have the famous regular, the famous regular cash flows. So we have uh, irregular, and then number two, regular cash flows. If we are together up to now, ladies and gentlemen, is it possible for you to hit that thumbs up emoji on your Zoom? If you are together, if you've been able to write up to here, is it possible for you to put a thumbs up like this or a smiling face? Thank you very much. We are together. So we have irregular cash flows, and then we have regular cash flows. Ladies and gentlemen, please listen and listen to me very well. You may not be knowing these uh, acronyms, but anytime you see irregular cash flows, anytime you see irregular cash flows, use PVF to discount. Use PVF to discount. Use PVF to discount. I'll tell you what that acronym stands for. But anytime you see irregular, use PVF to discount. And whenever you see regular, you shall use what we call PVFA, PVFA to discount. You shall use what we call PVFA to discount. You shall use what we call PVFA to discount. You shall use what we call PVFA to discount. You shall use what we call PVFA to discount. You shall use PVFA to discount. So then what does this PVF mean? Now, before I tell you what PVF means, I would want to take a minute of your time to explain to you that this A stands for annuity, PVFA, annuity. Annuity means what year? Regular, regular. So if, for example, Lillian today was to invest in a business that gives her a million shillings in 2021, a million shillings in 2022, a million shillings in 2023, then this a million, a million, because it's repetitive in nature, it will fall under the class that we call regular, that we call regular or uniform cash flows. So you're saying that these regular, they're also known as who? Uniform. They're also known as you? Uniform. Uniform. Annual, annuity, annuity, regular, 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 regular. And if they are regular, then we shall be using what we call PVFA. So I simply wanted you to see the difference, first of all, between irregular and regular. Irregular means what here? Non-uniform. 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 So if, for example, we have here Kanjagi getting a million in 2021. 2022, he gets 1.5 million. 2023, is getting a different amount, which would be 80,000, for example. So long as these amounts are fluctuating, then automatically whatever cash flowing to you Cash flowing to you is irregular. And if it's irregular, then we shall be using what we call PVF. 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 We shall be using what we call PVF. We shall be using what we call PVF. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please listen and listen to me very well. So we have a very important thing that I would want us to talk about here, which, of course, is the explanation of the acronyms. So whenever you see this thing called PVF, Always remember that this is present value interest factor. Present value interest factor. And anytime they want us to give them the PV formula, PV will always be equal to 1 plus R raised to negative N. Uh, 1 plus R raised to negative N. So anytime they talk of PV, it's present value interest factor. And this present value interest factor formula is one plus R raised to negative who? Raised to negative N is one plus R raised to negative N is one plus R raised to negative N raised to negative N. Are we together there? 
are we together? Are we together? If you are together, you simply say yes for why, why for yes. Thank you very much. So this R stands for required return. Required rate of return. Required rate of return is what we shall be calling the famous cost of capital. Is what we shall be calling the famous cost of capital. Is what we shall be calling the famous cost of capital. And then of course N for now, N will be standing for a number of years. N will be standing for a number of years. N will be standing for a number of years. Thank you very much. So that is what we call PVF. And of course, if you allow me with your permission, then I will be able to just rub this area. If you allow me with your permission, I'll be able to rub this area. And then I introduce this other acronym that we call PV for, which will be the present value. Interest factor, interest factor of an annuity. Interest factor of an annuity. So there is an A there. Interest factor of an annuity. Present value, interest factor of an annuity. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this one was taught to me by somebody. I mean, I will never forget this. This guy told me that uh, so long as you give him the PV formula, so long as you give him the PV formula, then getting PV for is simple as singing a batch A, B, C, D, I mean. A, B, C, D, PV for is as easy as a stroll or a walk in the park. A walk in the park is a simple thing. So long as there is no wild animal around. If a wild animal comes by, then automatically you get yourself that uh, being in a problem. You'll be able to know that it was not just as easy as a walk in the park. So PV will be a walk in the park. So long as you give me this formula. To get PV farm, we shall be talking of one minus this smaller formula. One minus this smaller formula which is one plus R raised to negative N, and then everything, and I mean everything, to be divided by R, everything. And please R, this is supposed to be R, only that my handwriting is very bad. You know, God again cannot give you everything. Yeah? There must be a few things that God snatches away from you so, so that you can see his relevance. So if you start coiling your R like mine, I really pity you if I get you a notebook. I really pity you. It's supposed to be a normal R. It's supposed to be a very normal R. Now, is there somebody in this case here from afar who has been able to see how to cram this formula, who has been able to understand how to cram this formula of PV from afar? What they normally tell us, ladies and gentlemen, that uh, we are able to see you guy from, is it position 18 or whole eight? I don't know, 18. We are seeing you from whatever distance, 18. And the moment we see you from far there, then you will not be able to score. You will be able to score because we'll be able to ring fence our goal. Great. So PVFA, they are swearing that they shall never forget the formula of PVFA. The formula of PVFA. And they know that PVFA stands for who? Annuity. Stands for annuity. Stands for annuity. Stands for annuity. Annuity. PVFA. Annuity. Now, then here we are, Jacqueline Oronio Limited. Jacqueline Limited. Jacqueline Limited has the following cash flows. The following cash flows. So I don't know whether we give Jacqueline Limited heavy cash flows or small, small, small cash flows. No, Jacqueline seems a serious business lady. Jacqueline seems a serious business lady. Actually, let us capture our cash flows in millions. She seems a very serious lady. Millions. So end of year one, it is 10. End of year two, she gets 12. End of year three, she gets 15. End of year four, she gets what year nine. So these are millions like that. Millions like that. You're a Jacqueline Limited D. She's in business and she expects to get this cash flow. They are positive, so they are cash inflows. Their cash inflows. Their cash inflows. And then, ladies and gentlemen, we are required here, we are required here to determine the total, the total present value of Jacqueline's company if the cock is 10%. If the cock, the cock is 10%. Remember our cock 
is cost of rule. Our cock is cost of capital. Our cock is cost of capital. Our cock is cost of capital. Imagine such kind of questions they come in this level. This is a useless thing. No serious examiner should ever give us this kind of a question like they have done several days. Several, I'll be able to show you from the past. They give you even cash flow and then they ask you to determine the total present value. So in short, they want me to discount this. For me to discount this, the first thing that I've got to design is how are the cash flows like? 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 Which type of cash flows are these? I, I think these are annuities. I think these are annuities. I think these are annuities. All of them are telling me, Mwali Mulio, no, you are joking with us. These are irregulars. They are irregular. They are irregular. I love what I'm seeing there. They are irregular. They are irregular. Thank you, Kiyama. They're irregular because they are fluctuating. And then if they're irregular, then what I'll know, what I'll do, I mean, what I'll do here, I know that if they're irregular, so we are writing their solution, that they are irregular. Solution, they are irregular cash flows. They are irregular cash flows. And therefore, we shall use a PV part. And therefore, we shall use PV to discount them. 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 We shall use V to discount these because they are irregular. And then now we know the formula of PV. We know the formula of PV is one plus R raised to negative N. That is the formula of PV. Abracadabra, please look at this PV. We know that our R cost of capital is 10%. So this one here will be one plus point one, one plus point one, one plus point one. One plus point one. Don't ask me where this one is coming from. It is in the formula. One plus R. It's in the formula. One plus R. R is constant throughout. What will even the negative is constant throughout. Even the negative is constant throughout. Even the negative is constant throughout. What will keep on changing? What will keep on changing? Will be the time. Like this is time one. This is time two. This is time three. This is time four. So please, all of us, wherever we are, are we able to get a calculator and get these figures? Total value. Already they have total value. So when I say one point two one, karest, karest, kana kaiwi kwa kubatoni yako, karest, kana kaiwi, rest, rest na kana mnahi, rest na kana mnahi. Kuna make sure that everybody, everybody should know how to. Gloria Ogaga. She's given me four decimal places. Gloria. Gloria, there's supposed to be four decimal places. Four decimal places. Always. Kanyagi Wongo. It can't be 1990. It is 1991 Kanyagi. Just check again. 1991. Check again. Check again. A good question from Stephen there. I will be able, I will be able to handle that. Stephen, don't worry. I'll be able to handle that. Thanks for that question. Please give me for year two. We are taking 1.1. Raised to negative two for year two, where are we? For year two, I can't see anybody who has a tried. Year two, 8264. 0.8264. How about year three? Year three, I can see from Liz Charo. 7513. 7513. And then we have Umi has given me 7513. Uh -huh. So now I want year four. Year four from Brandy Okeyo. Liliana, Umi again, 0 0.6830. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. The moment you've been able to get this PV, they're also called the discounting factors. PV, they're also called the discounting factors. Now what you need to do is to discount now the cash flow. You take the cash flow times the PV. Now you'll come and write for us here, the discounted cash flows, the last column here. Last column, come and give us discounted cash flows. Discounted cash flows. So discounted cash flows, we have here 10 times this. I know this one gives me 9.091. That one I'll get very easily. 
thank you, Liz. Liz is asking a very good question. What if we use the figures in the table directly? You see now the problem with AFM is that uh, this cost of capital will be calculated. We're going to calculate this cost of capital, for example, using the famous Wakaka, using the famous year Wakaka. It's called the WACC. At the end of the day, the cost of capital we get here will be like a decimal. It will not be in the tables, Liz, imagine. If it was in AFM, for those that I thought AFM in section three, financial management in section three, I used to tell you don't even cram this formula. Let's be doing, uh, let's be reading the tables. But you see now, this is an advanced level. Advanced level, we must always uh, try as much as possible to work with the formula. Actually, in class, I normally assume like uh, you guys will not be given tables. That's what I assume. Great. So come to the second one. Oh, yeah. 12 off times 0 0.8 at 264. I'm being told by Jacqueline Oronio, 9.9168. 9.9168, ah, 9.9168 from losing Katha. Aha, uh -huh, so now we are on the third one. On the third one, what do we have here on the third one? 11.2695, 11.2695. And then now we have the last one, the last one, the last one from Brandy, from Lea, 6.147, 6.147, the last one. Thank you very much. Now that these are children of the same feather, we've been able to discount them to today's values. All of them, they're discounted. Now they are compatible. What we are against in financial management is to take a shilling today, you add it to a shilling tomorrow. A shilling today and a shilling tomorrow, those are two different birds in different forests. But once you discount them, now they become children of the same mother. Birds of the same feathers, they flock together. Now we can add them. And I saw like uh, Paul had given me a figure here. Paul had given me a figure here. Paul had given me a figure here. Now you are adding. Discounted cash flows will always be added. From Jacqueline, 36.4243. 36.4243 like that. So whatever you have here is what we call the total present value. So it means that Jacqueline limited's value is 36. So if you want to buy this business from Jacqueline, from Jacqueline, you'll have to pay her 36 million Kenya shilling. The 0.42, I believe she's not a bad lady. She'll be able to give us what year a discount? A discount. That's how we value an organization using discounted cash flows, using discounted cash flows, using discounted cash flows. Ladies and gentlemen, please listen and listen to me very well. Listen and listen to me very well. For example, if we have a gentleman here, Godfrey Mwangi, if Godfrey Mwangi today, if Godfrey Mwangi today, today Godfrey Mwangi was to get a serious girlfriend. Perhaps he doesn't have a serious one, but if he was to get a serious girlfriend here. So we have here time. So we have time one, two, three, four. And then we have cash flows. So this great lady gives promises to give Godfrey, Godfrey 10 million in year one, 10 million in year two, 10 million in year three, 10 million in year four. Now listen, this is exercise number two, exercise number two. And I would want, I know that these are regular. I know that these are regular. I know that these are regular. Ah, good question there. I know that these are regular. These are regular because they're annuities, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, like that. But I would want us to treat them like they are irregular. For exercise number two, first of all, we are treating them independently, like they are independent lump sums. So then if that is the case, I would want us again to use PV here. I would want us to use PV. And if you don't mind, I would want us to use the 10% so that we can move very fast Let's copy the 10% PV factors. PV factors. I know that these 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, they are regular, but I'm besieging you guys. Let's, in this case here, handle them as if they are irregular. Let's handle them as if they are irregular. So if that is the case, could you kindly, of, this was 0 0.1991. I can remember. This was 0 0.8264. Is that the case? 0 0.8264. Then there is a 75. I think that in 
you guys read from your books because you're using 10% as the cost of capital. Read from your books. You're using 10% as the cost of capital. You're using 10% as the cost of capital. Uh -huh. 7513. 7513. And then we have lastly 6830. 6830. So then could you kind of come and give me what we call the discounted cash flows? Discounted cash flows kindly multiply for me. So discounted cash flows here will be 9.091. If you take this 10 times this, this will be 8.8264. This will be 10 times point uh, seven. This will be 7.513. And then this one here will be 6.830. So then could you kindly come and give me the total? Could you kindly come and give me the total? Could you kindly come and give me the total? The total according to Fatma is 31.698. Is 31.698. Thank you and thank you very much. Eugene Maigi. Maggie, sorry. Eugene, Eugenia Maggie. Ah, okay. Eugenia Maggie. She is confirmed. It is 31.698. 31.698. Thank you so much. But now, ladies and gentlemen, method two. If I'm a bright man, if I'm a bright man, I will come and use the annuities approach. The annuities approach dictates that first of all, we calculate PV file. And I would want in this case here to listen a little bit, listen a little bit and see whether there is anybody who will be able to use their abracadabra genius ways and give us PV file, 10%. We're going to enjoy this thing for four years. Let me see whether there is anybody who will be able to use uh, some abracadabra, some genius ways to be able to give us, to be able to give us, to be able to give us, to be able to give us the PV. If you do that, not today, I don't have money today. Uh, ah, 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 Lilian, Eugenia, Bogwa. Ah, ah, these guys are great. 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 Thank you and thank you so much. One thing that I've loved about this class, you guys are, uh, I mean, th th this class is very serious. The guys who are attending classes, they are quite engaging. Actually, not, actually not, they're not quite, very engaging, which is very good. The doors of Castnab will open wide. For you trust you me. If you continue like this and don't miss any class, you shall go to places. You shall go to places, yes. You shall go to places. Just like that. Very important. Very important. So if it's PV far, then the formula here will be one minus the smaller formula, the smaller formula, the irregular formula, raised to negative n all over r. If I move a bit slowly here, it will be one minus one plus. R is 0.1, raised to negative four, raised to negative four, raised to negative four. All over R, R which is what year? 10%. You see 10% is the same as 0.1. 10% is the same as 0.1. Here you have to move slowly. You tell us one minus this, raised to negative four. Please everybody, everybody move slowly. Tell us one minus, don't say it equals anywhere. You say one minus 1.1 .1, and then raise to minus four, raise to minus four, and then you say equals, equals. And then you divide by 0 0.1, 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 and then give me the final answer. Give me the final answer here. Give me the final answer here. Is there somebody who is able to give me the final answer here? After you divide with 0 0.1. After you divide with 0 0.1, according to Bogua, it is 3.1699. 3.1. Six nine nine. This is according to Bogwa. According to Bogwa, it is three point one six nine nine. Irene Njuki, I respect to your figure, although it's in terms of how many decimal places or two. That's still okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, then my total present value in this case will be equal to what? My total present value. My total present value will be equal to the annuity. Annuity. Times PV far. The annuity, don't tell me, Mwalimu, they are 
four of them are picked and then, then, then. No, no, you only take one annuity amount. One annuity amount. Times the PV for the two guys have just given me, which is 3.1699, like that. So are you able to give me this final answer? I can see Gloria Ogaga. I can see Nyakundi. I can see Obwago. Eh, eh, eh. <laughs> okay. So they're giving you the figure of 31.6. Ah, I, I rub the figure that I got up here. The figure that we got up here, save for rounding off errors. Are you seeing that it's quite close to what we have here? Is there somebody who is able to see that they are very close? Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. The value are all these, the value today. Yes, the total present value. Now, automatically, the total present value is there. Future values discounted to today's period. So this is the total value today. Total value today. Total value today. Total value today. Now, between the two methods, which method should we work with? The first one where we assume that they're, they're irregular or the second one? We don't have a choice. We must always work with the second one. Because what Godfrey's girlfriend will do is to promise him 10 million every year for 50 years. So if he promises him 10 million every year, 10, 10, we'll start really using the irregular method. It cannot work. So we shall always use what here? Method number two. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So in short, ladies and gentlemen, what we have is this. In short, what we have is this. This is what we have. Assuming in this case here, we have Sylvia, exercise three. Exercise three. Sylvia expects to receive Kenya shillings 12 million per annum for 10 years. For 10 years. If cork, if cork cost of capital is 10%, determine the total present value. Determine the total PV. Determine the total present value. Sylvia expects to receive Kenya shillings 12 million per annum for 10 years. If cock is 10%, then could you kindly, good question there, I'll be able to answer, good question there. If cock is 10%, determine the total present value. Fatima is asking a good question again. Does it mean you can use any? No. We shall be using the second formula. They're giving us the same value because, of course, even if they are different formulas, they, 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 getting the same value is very intentional. If, for example, we have got fewer years, fewer years, like say up to 10 years, then you can decide to use any method. But at the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen, okay, you get the same answers, but you labor more. If you try using method number one for annuities, you labor more. Who would want to labor more in this world? Laboring is not a good thing. If there is a shortcut, I would always go for. The shorter formula, PV for yes. So the Sylvia's case is quite an interesting one. The moment they say it is 12 million per annum for 10, the thing of per annum, per annum means regularity, means uniformity. So it is 12 million, 12 million like that. So then what I'll do here is to come and write solution. Say total present value, total present value equals the annuity which is 12 million times PV for, and then I'll be able to do this PV for separately. This PV for will be one minus one plus R raised to negative N, divided this by R. One minus one plus R raised to negative N. I can see Eugenia McGee giving me this answer. So PV for present value interest factor of an annuity is one minus 
this resonative n all over r. Abracadabra substitution. So we have here one minus one plus r. My r is the cost of capital, which is 0 0.1, 0 0.1 raised to negative n. N is a number of years. This lady will be getting 12 million for 10 years. So raised to power 10 all over r, which is 0.1. Now there must be somebody here because I'm not getting questions. There is one thing that I know. There must be somebody here who is postponing thinking. There must be somebody here who is postponing thinking. Quite a sad statement. Do you know why I'm saying that? There must be somebody saying, I'm not getting this figure like now when we are raising, that I would want to just remain silent and then I'll be able to know how to do it later. There is no later. It is now or never. You would rather say, stop the whole thing. This thing now I'm not understanding. You put in an emoji there that is crying tons and tons of tears. And we'll be able to see. We stop everything until you understand. Until you understand. Until you understand, yes. Until you understand. So like if you're following, Joyce is giving me a figure of six point. Joyce is giving me a figure of 6.1. 6.1. 4.4. Six point one four four six like that. Is there somebody who is getting a figure six? Point, thank you, Monica has confirmed. Monica has confirmed. Monica has confirmed. So then, ladies and gentlemen, this one here will be total present value. The total present value. Total present value. The total present value will be the annuity of twelve million times the six point one four four six like that. So then could you kindly give me the total answer according to Leah in terms of according to Irene Njuki is 73.74 million. Thank you very much. You guys are brilliant. And then now we have Lucy Nkatha who now gets a big favor. I mean, Mother Earth decides to look at her during broad daylight and gives her the CEO of Safaricom for her husband. So the current guy must be married, I don't know, right? Don't accept to be a second wife, but if you assume me, it is okay. And then now this man comes and tells Lucy, you know what? I'm going to put a fund for you. And this fund is quite an interesting fund that you will get 20 million per annum, that's every year, indefinitely. Indefinitely, let's handle this. Indefinitely now. So the case of Lucy Nkara, the lady from Meru. Meru is a beautiful county. Beautiful county. So we have here exercise number four. So Lucy here expects to receive, to receive 20 million per annum for indefinitely. Indefinitely. Indefinitely which is the same as infinity, infinity. And then they have given you cock of 5%. Cock of 5%. They have given you cock of 5%. They have given you cock of 5%. So you are required here to determine the total present value. Required D. Determine the total present value. Determine the total present value. So is there somebody who can really remind us what formula do you think shall we use to be able to get total present value? What formula shall we use to be able to get total present value? It's still PVFA. I love that. It's PVFA because it's an annuity. It's an annuity. But there is a special formula for indefinite. Yes, I can see T one G co has remembered this formula from financial management of intermediate level. So the students are saying, well, use PVFA, and the PVFA is one minus one plus R raised to negative N all over what year? But you see now this time around, N is in infinity. So if n is in infinity, it means automatically that this entire term here is useless. So in short, we are saying that the PV far 
whenever n is in infinity, we shall be using one over r. If I were you, I would have, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, taken up this, taken up this. And if I have a, a yellow highlighter or a blue one, also a blue one, we can accept blue highlighters. Please, this is very important. PV far, when n is in infinity, when n is in infinity, will always be one over what here? One over r. Great. Thank you so much, PV for when n is in infinity. And therefore, then the total present value, how then do we get the total present value? I love this. To get total present value, ladies and gentlemen, to get total present value, total PV, in case n is in infinity, then I will take the annuity automatically times PV for annuity times PV for. And the PV far is the one that you guys have given me a special thing, one over R. So therefore, to get total present value, in case we are talking over N is infinity, we shall be taking annuity divided by R. This is a very important formula that I will always remember. That I will always remember. Thanks, Grace. I can see you have responded very well there. So anytime, ladies and gentlemen, you don't have to remember the derivation. The most important thing is that uh, whenever you are given present, or rather you're given n is infinity, we don't have, you know, like there is a time, they gave us some question here in Kassin. You know, is not our mother. You know how our mothers are nice. Our mothers, you know, they are very nice. Your, your mother is, I mean, a very nice person. They always wish all the best on you. So now Kasneb gives students a, a simple question, just like this one, 12 million per annum. They never spoke about infinity. They never gave years. And then now students were calling me after Molly, we taught us so well. But now these guys here have given us a question with an error. So I asked which error. They gave us a question where the annuity was 12 million, uh, and I'm fine, but they never gave us the number of what year years. And I remember because it was towards Christmas, I could not tell them that, you know what? You guys, you guys, you guys have been eaten up. In that question, I could not tell them that. So I just agreed with them that uh, it's an error, but I knew there is a pro, there's a problem there. There is a problem there. There is a problem there. So if you go to a question and then you realize that the examiner has not given you N, N is not defined, straight away know that uh, this examiner is looking for you to know straight away that this is an infinity question that is putting up for you. He just wants to confuse you, right? You know, the examiner, Kasnev, has employed examiners who have a full-time role at Kasnev. So every day for those three, four months, they're always looking at how do we get this guy or this Beautiful lady failing. That's their work every day. Don't you think they are sadists? Don't you think they are sadists? But their main objective in this case is to ensure that you are down. What kind of people are these, honestly? <laughs> what kind of people are these, honestly? <laughs> and nice. But this time round, we are untwisting them. This time round, they must release us from their shackles. They must release us. We must leave. We must leave. We must leave unbruised. Unbruised. So because this is indefinite, then the total present value will be the annuity or the cash flow divided by R. Divided by R. Annuity divided by what year? R. And this annuity, ladies and gentlemen, this annuity, ladies and gentlemen, annuity is 20 million divided by our R cost of capital is 5%. Could you kindly give me the final answer? 100, right? 400. 400. 400. Is there somebody who is able to confirm this figure of 400 with us? Thank you so much, 400. Yay! Great, 400, 400. Example number, oh, 
is there a question up to now? Is there anybody who has a, a burning question before I go to the next exercise? I can see some of the questions you guys are asking are questions which are ahead of us. Questions of things that are ahead of us. 400 million. Thank you very much, Liz. Thank you very much, Irene. Thank you very much, Amika Staputa. What a wonderful name. Wonderful name. How, how we wish you were still in the position of getting children. I would have borrowed names from you. Sherry, great. Great. Really, 400 million. Thank you very much. So exercise number five. Exercise number five. Exercise number five. Exercise number five. So this exercise number five, ladies and gentlemen, is uh, here. Now, here we expect cash flow of 10 million per annum. Number of years not given, so assume infinity. R is 10%, but they have given us a growth rate of 2% per annum, a growth rate of 2% per annum. And then we are required to determine the total, determine the total present value, determine the total present value. Determine the total present value. How we arrived at 400, we took the 20 million, we divided it by 0 0.05. You see 5% is the same as 0 0.05. Thanks for asking that. 5% is the same as 0 0.05. 20 over 0 0.05. I hope now, Ellie Joy, you are able to get that. Thank you. Ah, yeah. So whenever there is growth rate, there is this formula I will never forget in my lifetime. Whenever there is growth rate, ladies and gentlemen, I will always remember this formula of provincial officer. Provincial officer equals district officer growth rate all over Kenya minus government. Kenya minus government. This is a very important formula, but uh, Dr. William Ruto should not hear you talking about this. He does plus. It's not plus. But we should also remind him it's not about, it's about the entire Africa. Africa, there are very few countries which have got uh, working what here? Governments. Working governments. Great. So let me know, ladies and gentlemen, once you are able to write this bad formula would say that provincial officer, we will have to start with the district officer who will grow, who will grow, who will grow with uh, in ranks. So DO, DO into one plus government, one plus government there, one plus government there. All over the denominator, we have what we call Kenya minus who? Minus government. Let me know, ladies and gentlemen, once you're able to write this. Let me know once you're able to write this. Let me know once you're able to write this. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you very much. Now, this one, PO, I'll be explaining to you later on that the PO stands for today's market price per share. O means today. DO stands for what? Yes, somebody. DO stands for today's dividends per share. Great. Today's. Don't even write them. What I want you to know is that uh, whenever there is a, a growth, whenever there's a growth rate, we shall be getting the total present value by taking the cash flow, which in this case is our annuity. By taking our annuity, this annuity is the one that we multiply with one plus growth rate. All of our, our cost of equity will be our R. Our cost of equity will be our R. R minus who? R minus G like that. So this is the formula that I would want you guys to put in bracket. This is the formula I would want you guys to put in brackets. This is the formula I would want you guys to put in brackets. So anytime there is this annuity, 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 and we happen in this case here to be having no end in sight, no end in sight, then that is a formula I'll be using, especially when there is what here, growth rate, when there is growth rate. So could you kindly go ahead and then substitute? What is the annuity amount? 10. Annuity amount is 10. 
into one plus growth rate. What is the growth rate? Two percent. Two percent is the same as zero point zero two. All over our R cost of capital is given here. It's ten percent, point one, minus the growth rate, which is zero point zero two, like that. Apa la jumbo nde pole pole. Upate numerator. Upate numerator kwanza. Please ni pati numerator wo ye. Ni pati numerator wo ye. Ten times one point zero two. Please give me the numerator. Ten point two. Ten point two. Thank you very much. How about the denominator? How about the denominator? How about the denominator? Zero point zero eight. Thank you very much. How about then the quotient? When you divide the two, the quotient. How about the quotient? How about the quotient? Sorry, okay. Zero point zero eight. Eh? Ah, that's what I wrote. T one zero. That's what I wrote. Grace is giving me zero point nine eight. Grace, please. Is it supposed to be 0 0.08 or 0 0.98? <laughs> Use your calculators. Don't assume. Don't assume. Vero is giving me a figure of 127 point. 127 point. So all of us, first of all, before I make this thing simpler, are we together or 0.5 is still okay? 0.5 is okay. 0.5 is okay. 0.5 is okay. But are we together? Are we together? Are we together? Are we together? Great. Thank you so much. Now, please listen here. Please listen here. Please, please listen here. There is something that I've taught you here which is very, very important. There is something that I've taught you here that is very, very important. That is very, very important. What is this thing that I've taught you which is very important? So, then, gentlemen, what I've taught you here which is very important is this. That for us to get total present value when n is in infinity, we normally take the annuity all over R. To get the total present value when N is infinity and we have a growth rate and growth rate, growth rate is given, growth rate is given, growth rate is given. What I'll do, I'll come and take this figure of annuity. Of course, the annuity must grow. The annuity must grow. The annuity must grow. All over down here, it has got a negative effect. A negative effect. So this is a very, if I were you, I would have written both here, and then I highlight. I highlight like that. I highlight like that. I highlight like this. Or DO, thank you very much, Oliver. DO is the cash flow. And I'll be coming back to this formula later. I told you we will not even make any comment because of this. This, we shall be coming to it later. We shall be coming to this later. We shall be coming to this later. So is there somebody who has been able to block this and highlight it very nicely? If you have, able, if you have been able to do that and you happen to be having your son or your daughter seated next there with you, you need to give her your phone or whatever. She tells us, hey, mommy has done that. The D has not highlighted anything. The D is not even writing. You know, these online classes are also very good. You know, you're not able to see on their side what you guys are doing. So once we finish, please let me know whether we are together. Tobias says yes. Godfrey Mwangi, yes. Done. Done. Thank you so much. Now, I would want us to then go to our past papers, but now we must go to the front of our books, to the front of our books, to the front of our books. I hope all of us have been writing all this nonsense at the back of our books. Is that the case? Were we writing this at the back? Oh, anyway, anyway, no, no worries. If it, the book is still yours. Don't worry, the book is yours. Don't worry. <laughs> Don't worry, the book is yours. The book is yours. Remember now at the front, what are we writing there? If you're writing your notes very well, at the front, what you're writing there are methods of valuing targeted companies. Methods of valuing targeted companies. Methods of valuing, valuing targeted, targeted companies. 
how do we value targeted companies before we start buying them as predators? So the first method is what we call the discounted cash flow. The discounted cash flow method. The discounted cash flow method. Discounted cash flow method. Discounted cash flow method. Again, just to see that we are together, when you are ready to continue, please just mention there, just a thumbs up like that. Great, Godfrey is confirming very fast. Now we are together, thank you very much. So then I would want us to look at December 2011, question number three. December 2011, question number three. It's a question that David shared with you. Again, David can share with you on WhatsApp. It's a question that David shared with you on WhatsApp. Keep like that. I can see you around there. And I can call him Naina Salimena Maduri Sana. There's a question that uh, when David shared with you, it's an old question, but they keep on testing it severally. December 2011. I'm so sure there must be somebody who was not yet born in 2011. We shall overcome. But the question is on WhatsApp. The question is on WhatsApp. You can share again. <laughs> oh, they have it already. Thank you very much. They have it already. They have it already. So we are told here Double Limited is contemplating. Double Limited is contemplating acquiring Tattoo Limited. The following information relates to Tattoo Limited for the next five years. For the next five years. It's mergers and acquisitions. Mergers and acquisitions. So Dub Double Limited is contemplating acquiring Tattoo Limited. The following information relates to Tattoo Limited for the next five years. So we have year one, year two, year three, year four, year five. And then we are told additional information. After the fifth year, the cash flows available to Double Limited from Tattoo Limited are expected to grow by 10% per annum in perpetuity. The examiner loves that thing, in perpetuity. Tattoo Limited will retain 40 million for internal expansion every year. The cost of capital can be assumed to be 18%. The applicable corporate tax is 30% required the estimated annual cash flows of Tattoo Limited. So could you kindly, you know, that kind of, this kind of a question is a gentleman, Atakama mimi ni mshenzi, 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 mshenzi kabisa, nitapata max zote kwa isu wali. Kwa sababu gani, tunajua cash flows, wazi natokana kwa profitability. And how do we get profit? We normally take revenue minus expense, expenses. So like I can see the year one, I can see the revenue which was net sales was 10,050. And then I can see minus 735. I can see selling and administration minus 100. And then I can see minus interest of 40. Minus interest of 40. So is there somebody who can give me the profit for year one? What are we doing, Woye Abracadabra? What we are doing, Woye Abracadabra, is to get profit. So profit is revenue minus cost. For well, year number one, the revenue was 10 0, 50 minus the three expenses. The first expenditure is the cost of sales. Cost of sales is 735. We have another expenditure of 100. I'm lumping them. To, I would want to get the total expenses. And then I have an interest expense of what? These are simply marked which I'm getting without even knowing what I'm doing. So we are given here, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't mind, please, I will rub this. I will rub this and then I do this in form of a table. So I have year one, year two, year three, year four. So now I'm being given profit before tax. Of course, we haven't taxed them yet. We haven't taxed them yet. And I can see from Gloria and Fatma, we have 91.75. How about year two? We go slowly. According to Gloria, year three is 250. But somebody must confirm this. Somebody must confirm this. I think I'm leaving some of them behind. I need them to confirm. So year two, what are we doing? Revenue minus cost. Revenue minus cost. Revenue minus cost. 
Revenue minus cost. Revenue minus cost. Revenue minus cost. Revenue minus cost. Revenue minus cost. Aha, uh -huh. Eljo is saying that Mualimu, you have to slow down. They are slow runners here. That is why I'm always asking questions like, are we together? When I see people putting thumbs up, what does he tell me? Ongeza gear. So are there questions who are students who are left behind? Are there students who are left very behind? I can see that Joe is one of them. Are there other students who are left very behind? The students who are left very behind. I can see David saying yes. Okay. Monica, yes. Wanjiko, yes. From which stage? From which stage? From which stage? Where did you? Where did you? Where did you disappear? From which stage? Is it in this question or even from previous discussions? Is it in this question? 91 said, oh, where are we getting that 91.75 now? I even wrote it down. I even wrote it down. How we got 91.75, we say 91.75 is profit. How we get profit is revenue minus cost. It's revenue minus cost. And I hope revenue, you are able to see revenue. Revenue is sales. Revenue is sales. Like you can see, the first for year one, what is the sales amount for year one? Sales amount for year one. What is the sales amount for year one? Yeah, perhaps it's the question people you don't have. And sure you have the question itself. It's the one, you can even copy them there again. This is the one that David has just shared. So in this case here for year one, we have revenue of 10,050 minus cost. Year one, what is the first cost you are able to see there, Eljoy? Year one, what is the first cost you are able to see in year one? Eljoy, I'm talking to Eljoy. Luke Smith, Eljoy. Are you able to see year one, the cost of sales there is 735? Subtract any other cost again you are seeing in year one. I can see there is selling an administration cost of 100. I subtract that and then I'll be able to subtract interest expense of 40. Interest expense of 40. Are there operating expenses here? Is there any expenditure you may have left out? Are, are, you, are you seeing it? Are you seeing uh, operating expenditure really, Stephen? Which question are you doing, Stephen? It is the one that has been sent in the group. The one sent in the group, Stephen. The one sent in the group. So please, the students who are saying that they were left behind now, have they seen where, where we got this 1975 from? Have they seen where we got 9175 from? Okay, great. Now, are you able to give me the other figure then, you guys, using the same concept? Are you able to get me the other figures? Year, year three is 253. Year three is 253. 253. Monica says this is supposed to be 208. Olive well, is giving me 28. I don't know where the 28 is coming from. Year four, oh, year four, 282. So can we kindly confirm all of us that now we have these figures? Let's confirm all of us that we have these figures, all of us. I spent the ones who had said they were a little bit behind. I would rather answer a question severally, severally until all of us are, are the same. So year five, according to year five is three or three, eh? Thank you very much. There is a year five, eh? I have not even seen it. There is a year five. Three o there is a year five of three zero three three zero three. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Great. So all of us, we are in agreement that we are together. All of us, we are together now. All of us, we are together. Nobody's asking a question. So then, after getting profit before tax, 
What do you think would be the next thing to be done? What do you think would be the next thing to be done? Tax. So go ahead and calculate tax, yes. So give us the tax. The tax is 30%. The tax, tax yeah, is 30%. 30% of the profit. 30% of the profit. So like 30% of 9175 gives me what figure? 30%, 30% of 9175 gives me what figure? Uh -huh. 275? 2? 25 like that. Great. Year 2? Oja, is it 0.2? Yeah, 0.25, yes. Year two, according to Kanjagi, it is 30% of 208 is 60? 66. No, no. 30% of this, 28. Figure 10 of 1. 62.4. Oh, my, your calculator has a problem. Because it can't be 6. It has to be 60. Yes. Year three. Year three. I'm being C given a figure of uh, 50. Oops. Oops. 75.9. Thank you very much. Ah, yeah. And I got year four. What about good questions there? What about note number four? What about note number four? What about note number four? I have, not number four is the one we are using, isn't it? Corporate tax. Year one is 275 point. 30% of 9175. 2752.5. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. How about now year four? Please remember that 30% is 0 0.3. 30% is 0 0.3. So 30% of 282, 86, 84.6. And then 30% of 303, 90.9. 90. So then we are able to subtract now. We are able to subtract like this for us to come and get what we call profit after taxation need. Profit after taxation. Yes, yes, you can do 70%. So profit after tax, Namona Gloria, 6422.5. 6422.5, thank you very much. How about year number two? How about year number two? Uh huh. Year number two, we have 145.6. 145.6. Year number three, we have 177.1. 177.1. And then we have year number four. Year number four. Year number four. 197.4. And then we have year number five. Kaline, Kaline. 212.1. Thank you very much. Now, please listen. Please listen. You see, this question does not have depreciation. It does not have depreciation. I'll be teaching you later on. But for example, if we had a component of depreciation up here, I would have added back depreciation to get cash flows. I don't want to mention about that now. For now, we don't have depreciation. And when we don't have depreciation, then the profit after tax you have is your cash flow. I would want to repeat this a little bit, but I don't want to emphasize really anything about this. We shall be doing this in topic number one. That uh, if there is no depreciation, if no, don't write down there, you continue this table. If no depreciation, then profit after tax equals who? Equals your cash flows. Equals your cash flows. So this profit of the tax will be equal to our cash flow. Will be equal to our cash flow. Now listen, 
listen, but before I continue, all of us in terms of these figures, are we together really? Are we together before we continue? Are we together in a great? Thank you very much. Please don't feel shy. Always tell us whenever we are not together. Always tell us whenever you're not together. Thank you very much. Now, if no depreciation, for now we are cramming, for now we are cramming, if no depreciation, then profit after tax equals what year? Cash flow. Now listen. You see, normally when you are valuing, like you'd want to value RCM before you buy it from us, you shall be looking at, you as an investor, how much cash flow will you derive from RCM? It is this future cash flow that will derive from RCM that you shall be able to discount to value RCM. These cash flows now are what you're supposed to be using to value RCM. However, normally the targeted company will be forced to set aside some money, which cannot come to you. Money which cannot come to you. They'll be forced to set aside some money for purposes of future expansion, for asset replacements. That money which can't come to you you can't include it when you are doing a business evaluation. It's all about how much dividends are we capable of getting from a farm, what we call free cash flows. If you read note number, note number two, yes. We are told the tattoo limited will retain 40 million, all the figures are in terms of millions. We retain 40 for internal expansion every year, every year. So in this case, yes, and gentlemen, then I have to come and talk of what year less retain the cash flows for expansionary purposes. So this is our cash flow. We shall come here and the less retained cash flows for expansion, for expansion, which they've told us that every year, every year, this will be what year somebody every year will be 14. So if we do that, we shall be able to get what we call FC, FES, free cash flows. What can now come to me as an investor as dividends if I wish? Of course, you shall not be greedy and take up everything. But for us, the most important thing is to ensure that we value organizations using, if you're told that some amount has to be set aside, please subtract that amount to be set aside from the total cash flows you have. Otherwise, you get a zero in the entire question. And we don't want our students to get zeros, really. I know you are very tired. I know you are very tired. And the students have not heard their voice at all. I'll be able to name and ask their families to deny them food because they don't want to participate in class. And yet they are in an advanced level. Yes. So could you kindly give me these figures? Could you kindly give me these figures? 63, 82.5. Thank you very much. So now we are, <laughs> Susan. Hey, Susan. <laughs> so that's a man I buy. If they don't give me food. <laughs> 105? 0.6. 0.6. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, three. 137.1. I'll have to look what year? Four. One fifty seven point four. Thank you very much. Could you have a Now, Abracadabra, I know you guys are very tired. Before we take a break, listen and listen to me very well. free cash flows, Unasimamisha. Unasimamisha free cash flows. Hivi ndi wendele kuangalia mamba ya perpetuity. Unakuja hapa abracad. I have the best book ever. My book I rub it the way I wish. I do with it whatever I want. Quite flexible. So we have year, year one, year two, year three, year four, year five. And then of course there is infinity. There is a place they have told us there in note number one. After the fifth year. The cash flows available to double limited from that to limited are expected to grow by 10% in perpetuity. So after year five, we have the perpetual thing. 
Sasa hapa nakuja muandikia free Mandela free Mandela free cash plus please for you given that you're writing this for the very first time write this in full write this in full free cash flow free cash flow Mandela free so free cash flow year 1 we have 6382.5 here we have 105.6 here we have 137.1 157.4 172.1 and then lastly, we have to calculate this. Unasamamisha hivyo. Unaweza ifanya, iko kama penda kufanya kama imelala hivi lakini kama ni mimi nikiambia discount, lazima nisamamishe hivi. Free cash flow. Free cash flow. So now I'm doing the very last almost the last stage which is the one of getting the one of getting this infinity present value. So then if you allow me, I'll be able to come and write a big title. A big title here called Infinity Cash Flow. Big title called Infinity Cash Flow. Infinity Cash Flow. This one here. And how do we get in anytime they talk of infinity cash flow? I'll always remember my formula. Yes. Present value when n is infinity. So I'll take the annuity here into one plus who? R. All of R minus who? G. Anytime they talk of infinity, whenever there is a growth rate, this is the formula that I will always use. And I would want to pause there for a minute until I count thumbs up like this, like 20 of them, or even more, if you have been able to write up to here. If you have been able to write up to there, I can see Kifla that one. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes. Is it one plus R? Ah, oh, well, yeah. You're right. I'm so sorry about that. You must be a very bright student. I'm so sure that all of us here wrote one plus G. I'm a hundred. I'm the only one who is stupid. I wrote, uh, I should have written what here, somebody. G. G. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now, you see here, this RUT must be the most current. It's my VO. And the most current cash flow here is 17.1. So abracadabra, if you're following, I'm calculating this, it will be 17.1 into 1 plus the growth rate. Is there somebody who can see the growth rate in this question? Is anybody who is able to see growth rate that has been given in this question? Is there anybody who can see the growth rate? <laughs> growth rate is on 10 percent yeah it is 10 percent you guys are bright it's growing by 10 percent yes so the growth rate is 10 percent 10 percent is the same as 0 0.1 10 percent is the same as 0 0.1 all over is there anybody who is able to see the cost of capital r the required rate of return r anybody who is able to see r 18 percent which is the same as 0.18 isn't it Great. So 0.18 minus our growth rate again, growth rate, which is 0.1. Apa lazima tuende ule muendo wa kinyonga. Mdogo mdogo ni patia ni umeleta. Mdogo mdogo ni patia ni umeleta. Thank you very much, Irene. Remember, the most current annuity, the DO, is this one here. The one that is next to infinity, the DO, the most current. Because this 17.1 is the one they have told you will keep on growing indefinitely aha uh -huh. or oh, it is 172.1 aija 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 this 50 year thank you very much this 50 i'm being told it's 172.1 can you kindly confirm kindly confirm no wonder no wonder thank you very much for asking so i'm being told it's supposed to be 172.1 172.1 172.1 Aha, uh -huh. thank you very much. I can see Gloria has gone to the next level, giving me the numerator. Let me see whether there's anybody who will be able to confirm that there. The numerator, just as Gloria is giving me, 180 something. Thank you very much. So in this case here, it is 189.31, isn't it? Thank you very much. How about the denominator? How about the denominator? How about the denominator? Nakundi, Brandy. Chris Muthang, you are no longer talking now. I can't hear you. People are tired. You guys should be able to run. 
marathon races, long races, 0 0.08. So then could you kindly come and give me, in this case here, the quotient. Now, please divide. Please divide. Thank you, Eugenia McGee. Brandy tells me 23, 66.375. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you have reached there. Please, could you kindly advise me? What do you think shall we do next after we reach there? What do you think shall we do next after we reach there? Should we just finish this class? Do you think we are through the question? What do you think shall we do? What do you think shall we do? We discount. We discount. We discount the free cash flows. Thank you very much. We discount the free cash flows. Put it back to the fifth year. We discount. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now they have told me, Mualimu, come and discount these free cash flows. So we want to discount them. So come here and put PV formula. PV at what rate? Is there somebody who remembers the rate? What is the rate? What is the rate? Rate is 18%, isn't it? 18%. Rate is 18%. So this one will be 1.18. 1.18, 1 1.18, 1 1.18, 1.18, 1.18, 1.18. I don't know you know 1.18 watt. You know what I mean? 1.18 watt. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? 1.18 watt. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? 18%. 1 plus 18%, isn't it? 1 plus 0.18. Thank you very much. 1 plus R. Because the PV formula, the PV formula is one plus R raised to negative N. So abracadabra, after the same say raised to minus one, raised to, because now the negative, eh? ne negative here. Raised to minus three, raised to minus four, raised to minus five. And then now we have here in the PV formula, you take care, sir. Alimia mwale unajua sasa hapa, and the same raised to negative infinity then. Oh, yeah. Can somebody in this case here, ladies and gentlemen, I mean, Tell us, the last one here will be raised to what here because we can't have negative. The last one here should be raised to what here, somebody. Thank you very much. We drop, we normally talk of drop. You simply drop this down. You simply drop the same, minus five, minus five. Because it was discounted to year five. It was discounted to year five. You simply drop, you drop the one for last year. So Abracadabra, are you able to give me this for, into four decimal places very fast as we go away, as we go away, as we go away. Year five is the last. So I'm being told by Gloria, 84.75. Great. Please now write there like year two. Gloria seems to be quite a fast lady. 71, 82, isn't it? 0. 0.71, 82. And then we have year three now. 68, 86, eh? 6086, 6086, and then we have year four, year four, 51, 58. So 0, 51, 58. And then we have year five, year five, what we have? 43, 43, 71. And then we have the last one, the same, isn't it? We drop it, we drop it. Other students, like I saw it, was it Gloria? We'll tell you, take this figure and add it to your five. The same, take this figure, add it here. We toggle it up like that. So please go ahead and multiply this to be able to give us discounted cash flow. Discounted, discounted cash flow, discounted cash flow. What do we have here under discounted cash flow? Discounted cash flow, you are multiplying this and this so will give us a. Please give me two decimal places. The final answer, give me the. Two decimal places. 5409. Okay. The first one, I can't see people talking there. I can't see people talking there. Gloria has already given me a figure. Wilma, Willy Velma, 54. And I want two decimal places only. Go to year number two now. So year number two, abracadabra from uh, year number two from Lizzie, from Lizzie, seven, uh, from Eugenia, 75.80.
25.84 correct eh? thank you go to year number three yeah go to year number three go to year number three go to year number three 83.44 83.44 go to year number four year number four what do we have there for 81.22 please confirm whether year number four is 81.22 81.19. Okay, let's not fight over this. There are different law, uh, simple differences. And then the last year, somebody told me even in the discounted cash flow, the drop is not everything you drop. There is a concept of dropping somewhere under PV. So now we are on the last one. On the last one, 75. Oh, there is another one here. This year, okay. 71 point? 75 point? Two, two. And then now we have the last one that somebody will tell you drop. Don't drop everything down. Infinity. Don't drop everything down. So infinity, what do we have here for infinity? What do we have? 1034 point? 1034.34, isn't it? 1034.34. Now these are children of the same mother. Now you can come and add for us to give us the total present value. 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 What do we have? Total present value. Total present value. Total present value. What do we have here as our total present value? So according to Gloria Ogaga, 67 point. 67 point, 67. 59.2. Are they able to confirm that figure? Thank you very much. So this is the value of the farm. This is the value of the farm. This is value of the farm. This is the value of the farm. This is the value of the farm. Value of the farm. Value of the farm. Value of the farm. 